Hello, my name is Ruggiero Lomonaco and I am responsible for managing the real estate finanza at Vasmo. Today is the 7th of June 2023 and I am recording this video from Dubai. Over the last few weeks, there have been a lot of talk and speculation that the rollout of generative artificial intelligence might boost demand for data centers. Since I have invested in this sector for around 10 years, and our funds and portfolios have meaningful exposure to data centers, I decided to do some further research, which I would like to share with you. Data center represent a key conviction sector within the funds and portfolios we manage due to the security of income generated by leading the space to a variety of tenants spanning from IT companies, governments, uh, and in general, all type of corporates with data processing requirements, so practically everybody. Over the years, I have seen various forces underpinning the growth, for example, data security, the emergence of cloud computing, the rollout of 5G networks, Internet of Things. So I wasn't particularly surprised when analysts started to infer that the growth of generative artificial intelligence might positively impact the data centers. But it all, it's always good to deep, uh, to deep dive into a new trend to understand whether its fundamentals are sound or it is just a passive fad. Since the uproar about generative artificial intelligence came after the latest NVIDIA earnings call, I thought to start my research there, and I went to listen to the recording of the, of the call published on their website. In this call, essentially NVIDIA predicted that the rollout of chat GPT was a defining moment for the IT industry, akin to the introduction of the IT. In other words, Chat GPT is the app which finally brings a generative AI to consumers and stimulates developers to come up with solutions based on generative AI. With more AI applications coming to stream, the computing power requirements increase and with that, the demand for data centers. As you know, the iPhone brought in a single device multiple functions like a camera, a phone, and a computer full of app. To be fair, the technology was there. I remember playing with a handspring device in late 90s, and I was in love with it. I was also in love with my Blackberry, but the iPhone popularized the handheld devices beyond the corporate world and introduced the painful paid data roaming, unlike the BlackBerry, which was essentially free when traveling. Today, all our picture and information uh, are essentially stored on data centers, and the more data we produce, the more data centers we need. That is also true for data processing. Now, some processing can take place on a peripheral device, but there is a, a limit to the processing which can take place on those peripheral devices, especially when this process requires complex computations. That's when you need a data center. Now, if you have not yet used the chat GBT, I suggest you do, and I want to give you an example of how it works. Bear with me. So here is my chat uh, GPT account, and I am simulating the a task. So I'm simulating that I'm going to my analyst, and I'm asking to write a short business case about investing in data centers in North America. Write, write a short business case about investing in data centers in North America. And I want to give it a twist. Discussing the merit of building data centers versus 
acquiring an existing data center operator. Okay, so this is how it works. So you can see the speed at which this uh, uh, short business case has been uh, uh, written. I could have uh, uh, added uh, uh, additional uh, data and you would have uh, included this data into the documents. So my analyst would have taken maybe a week to write uh, something like this. This has been produced in a few weeks, in few in few moments. So you understand, and, and you can ask anything. I mean, you can you can do it yourself. Now, hopefully, that has given you uh, a taste of what uh, this app will do. And I'm sure that uh, over the over the the, the, the day, over the years. It will become more and more user friendly. You can have it already on uh, on a phone. Uh, you will see. You try, and you will see how it is useful. Now, the founder and CEO of Nvidia is Jack, and you might call him a visionary. If you really want to know what this AI revolution means and what the future looks like, there is no one better to tell us. So I went to watch a speech he gave recently in Taiwan, mm -hmm. and it's a, this is available on their on their website. Now, see, this is what he says. Just using some of the the slides that I've seen. In some he says that generative artificial intelligence is going to change the way computing works. It will require a lot more computing power at the time when traditional CPU installed in data centers are reaching capacity and data centers themselves are reaching the limit to how much electricity they can provide to those CPUs, central processing units. There is something in the IT industry called the Moore's Law, which states that computing power will accelerate progressively over time. This is, that is why computers have become smaller and smaller until they can fit into your pocket. So, but over the last few years, many industry practitioners have noticed that the technological advances of computing were slowing down and the Moore's law didn't work anymore. In other words, unless we build even bigger data centers than what we have now and feed them with more CPUs, we don't we won't be able to improve their performance however there is an alternative called accelerated computing which processes in processes information in parallel as opposed to the sequence to the sequential processing of, inform, of data of traditional cpus now that requires a different it architecture so the, to meet this requirement nvidia new generation processing units uh, have the ability to support this uh, accelerated computing. So Jensen uh, uh, predicted that, that over the next 10 years, the $1 trillion of installed data center capacity around the world will see traditional uh, CPUs replaced by an alternative infrastructure which support accelerated computing. So in other words, data centers will continue to play a central role in the digital economy and will continue to deliver the secure income we are seeking, but there will be a need of replacing the servers in those data centers to adapt them to the new infrastructure which is taking place. Now, how do we play this? Well, the easiest way in my opinion, is to go to existing data center platforms. To start a new data center platform 
from scratch and building data centers with a new uh, operator, I think is certainly the wrong way to do this. So look, for example, at uh, this data center read called Equinix. Over the last 20 years, they have delivered 26.95% total return, greatly outperforming the total return of the S&P 500 over that same period of 9.73%. So that shows you also that focusing on real estate and selecting the correct sectors and companies may indeed outperform the market. So Equilix has a fantastic platform to uh, 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 deliver exposure to the data center sector. Another, another company where, which I would point out is Digital Realty Trust. This company delivered a 16.98% return versus the 9.58% of the market. And as you can see, has corrected substantially during 2022. Look closer to what happened over the last few days when the chat GPT moment started. It's jumped. Now, another company which I would point out is Digital Bridge. Digital Bridge, up to 2000, okay, was called Colony Capital, and it was a diversified read. It had hotels, offices, all sorts of traditional assets. At some point, it was taken over by uh, uh, a new management, and renamed Digital Bridge. So what the new management did, it sold all the traditional assets and just started buying digital infrastructure assets. The price skyrocketed, but lately has been very weak. And that is to do with the fact that they have acquired so many companies, there are about 25, and the market is unsure on how to value this. They might actually shed their uh, status as a REIT and become just uh, a holding company. So this is certainly a company worth uh, uh, monitoring. One of the companies that data, the Digital Bridge owns is Vantage Data Centers. And uh, those of you who have been following us know very well that we have invested in this company. Now, there are two ways to invest in the Vantage Data Centers. One way is to invest into a portion called the development company. So they have the same name, but they do different things. The development company actually develops data centers. The, there is another part of Vantage data centers, which can be invested separately. It's called, I mean, it's called the Stabilized Data Center Company, SDC. And it's a portfolio of stabilized data centers with long leases. It's about three... 13 data centers at the moment worth over uh, $4 billion. So it gives the choice uh, of a growth versus an income uh, way of investing in, uh, in data centers. And as you can see, these are, I mean, you can go and check their websites called vantage dccom And if you go to locations, you can actually see the, the, the campuses that they own Santa Clara 1 and Santa Clara 2, these are the campuses where Microsoft, NVIDIA are tenants. Okay, So this is how you really can gain access to this sector. Now, in conclusion, generative AI combined with accelerated computing will transform data centers by enabling them to overcome the limitations of the Moore's law, the flattening of the Moore's law and meet the computational demand of modern AI application. The convergence, this convergence will pave the way for unprecedented innovation and efficiency in data center operations, fueling the growth of AI and its applications across industries. But the investments will have to be made through platforms. Now, just to conclude, I, I read a very interesting thing uh, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, ended a long interview a few months ago by saying he thought he would continue running NVIDIA 
for three to four more decades. But by the end of it, he might be a robot. I'm not sure that he was joking. Anyway, as usual, feel free to get in contact if you want to discuss this topic in more details. Bye-bye.